Paraguay, who I'm a uh, assistant professor at Texas State University. Um, so today I'll be presenting on some work that my uh, master thesis student has done on looking at uh, essentially blended class C and class F bio systems, and specifically hydration and strength development of these systems. And so uh, this is particularly a project that we did with Text out here in Texas. So uh, I'm pretty sure everyone's familiar here with SEMs and specifically fly ash. So we've all known that fly ash is a byproduct, of sort of the process of coal combustion, electric power generating plants. And so, um, you know, uh, why is this specific type of issue important to us? I'll kind of explain in a bit, but I just wanted to give some quick background on just the types of fly ash that are out there. And so uh, 618 is normally the specification that we refer to for different types of fly ash. Specifically in the U.S., we refer to class F, class C as the types we normally use. And so, you know, again, we, we are familiar with both being uh, mostly hydraulic and uh, in some cases, posolonic, depending on the sort of uh, chemistry between the two. And so it's generally what 618 is sort of specifying between the two different types of class, uh, classes of flash. And uh, if you look at the sort of specifics within 618, it's sort of based on the chemistry of the sum of the oxide between the silica, aluminum, and iron oxides. Uh, of the uh, of the uh, fly ashes, but we now know, obviously, for uh, many years, that these chemistries could uh, obviously be uh, variations between uh, different sources and different, even between different batches. Um, and so, it's very difficult to control. Uh, and so, uh, one of the things that is concerned in terms of Texas is uh, different types of fly ashes are changing in terms of coal sources and uh, very much changing in terms of, of chemistry. Uh, not only just in a uh, period of months, but in some cases in the period of weeks or days and in, in that type of chemistry of fly ash. So it's very difficult to control. Uh, many power plants are starting to shut down, so it's become more and more concerned because Texas is really reliant on fly ash for many different uh, durability issues. And so, you know, in terms of TxDOT standpoint, why is fly ash important? Um, sort of here, this conversation, these are sort of things that, you know, colleagues specifically uh, some colleagues at Texas, uh, UT Austin, and colleagues at TxDOT. But, you know, in Texas, we use it for uh, specifically a lot of reasons for uh, ASR. Here in the state, we have very uh, quite a few reactive aggregates. And so the concern for uh, either depleting flash supply or variations in the chemistry to be able to combat this is very important. But we also for use, it, use it for other things such as corrosion uh, on the Gulf Coast, um, many high-performance concrete that's uh, produced out there for corrosion resistance is uh, requiring a minimum amount of fly ash and in some cases uh, ternary mixtures with silica fume as well. Uh, but we also use it for reducing thermal cracking as well in the state. So uh, we rely on fly ash by far than any other source of SCM that is uh, particularly available locally here uh, in the states. So uh, particularly in Texas, fly ash supply is threatened and for many reasons, as I mentioned before. So uh, here in the state, we have many fire plants that are closing down. So these are uh, very various fly ash sources that are found within the state. Um, and this map is actually likely outdated at this point. So over the last, you know, as little as the last two or three years, some of these flash has actually closed down completely. And so uh, many of these are not even available at this point. Um, and if not, closed down in some cases have at least changed coal sources. So um, in some cases producing class C flash, whereas uh, beforehand they were producing class F flash. And so this is again, we need sort of EPA, uh, reduced costs, uh, just in terms of uh, sourcing the actual coals and, and that sort of thing. So, uh, but one thing that has particularly been common uh, or at least has gained some common, uh, some popularity here in the state is the blending of fly ash sources. And so that is particularly what this study is looking at um, uh, specifically is uh, the blending of flash sources, whether it be blending sort of uh, bituminous with uh, lignite type coal or the blending of even uh, F ashes with C ashes to produce a specific type of 618 type flash. Again, if you remember, uh, 618 is primarily based on sort of the chemistry of the system. And so uh, when we can blend these, uh, in some sort of fashion, whether uh, we blend them, intergrind them, or uh, in some cases uh, uh, produce, um, uh, even grade them to a particular particle size to, to at least meet the specification. Um, the issue is we don't know quite understand, we don't quite fully understand whether or not they may perform 
similar to what we consider maybe class F or a class C as we have historically seen. So as particularly tech stats, um, uh, sort of concerned with these types of issues that are being done around the state is a, is a blending of fly ash, whether coal sources or specifically the actual fly ash. And so uh, what most people are doing as far as blending of fly ash is, is blending what they consider sort of an off-spec fly ash uh, with an on-spec fly ash and then trying to meet uh, still meet the 618 uh, specification in order to be used in concrete. So it's a sort of interesting event. So again, in, in terms of the problem statement in particular that we're concerned with, um, specifically this project originated with uh, really focusing on ASR as the concern. Uh, ASR is, is probably the most uh, studied sort of durability concern here in the state. And we primarily use fly ash in many cases. And in fact, TxDOT requires usually the minimum of 20% class F fly ash, unless you can meet sort of alkali minimum requirements based on cement content. Of the mixture design, 20% uh, flash class F is usually required, and we don't have many class F sources left here in the state. And so, um, when thinking about how flash reduce, you know, very little is actually paid attention in terms of the rank of the coal burnt. You know, you know electro power generating plants are in the business of making electricity, not in making fly ash. And so, uh, there's very little concern in terms of what they're trying to gain in terms of. Uh, producing a certain type of fly ash. And then obviously there's issues with increasing regulations, but this has been known for many, many years as far as, uh, you know, using uh, different sources of coal, uh, reducing uh, mining, and also just in terms of reducing uh, burning of coal in general across the country. And so uh, this is also obviously having an impact as far as the fly ash that's produced. And so there's a lot of variations in the property of fly ash. So, you know, TechStop specifically was looking at us to do some durability testing, specifically looking at corrosion and ASR. Uh, we did also obviously do uh, some mechanical property testing, which is what this protection will focus on. Um, but other universities, UT specifically, was looking at methods of ways of uh, identifying and, and quickly doing test methods or developing test methods to identify whether a fly ash or not uh, would have similar or worse performance based on these sort of uh, uh, methods of, of producing fly ash, whether blending uh, blends of coal or blends of fly ash. And so uh, that was particularly their sort of part of the study in this case. So um, in this particular uh, project, we, uh, again, this is one of my bachelor's thesis students. So this is uh, a lot of the work that was done was uh, from him and, and these slides were developed from him. And I hope I'd hoped he, he would present on this. He, um, uh, was the one more, more, more knowledgeable than I am about many, much most of the stuff. So uh, bear with me as we go through these next couple of slides. But um, the objective was really to evaluate the performance of these systems, uh, you know, uh, of different variations of class C and class F, you know, specifically with uh, blended with OPC, but also looking at sort of what we consider as ternary systems where we blend C and F uh, in the lab and then identify the improvements of, or the sort of, uh, variations in terms of mechanical property strength, both compressive, tensile, and elastic modules. And so um, we, you know, we really wanted to evaluate these as a binary system, typically as a, you know, uh, percent replacement OPC as a single fly ash system, meaning, you know, we're replacing class C or class F alone. Uh, but we're also replacing, in some cases, as a ternary system where we place, we use both AC and F to see the impacts of those in, on mechanical strength development. Um, and then when we get to the materials that we will, that we focus on, there's specifically one type of fly ash that uh, particularly uh, used a, a blended, not a blended of, of ash, but actually a blend of coal to produce a specific type of fly ash as well. So I'll get into that here in a bit. And so in addition to just mechanical strength, we also looked at um, looking at a uh, hydration and, and, and looking at calorimetry data as well to see sort of uh, if we could characterize these sort of uh, material combinations and in, 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 uh, hydration strain development from uh, using calorimetry uh, data. So again, the idea here is to generate data that would at least guide us in terms of uh, determining whether or not these systems would have some uh, or achieve some certain design of mechanical and durability properties. Um, obviously, we're trying to, uh, on a sustainability standpoint, is reduce the cost of concrete by doing replacements of cement, uh, but the overarching end goal is really to just increase durability 
uh, of these systems and be able to use these sort of uh, non-traditional flashes uh, in jobs, uh, specifically for TechStop. And obviously reduce CO2 emissions is obviously uh, another particular goal of, of uh, continuing to use these fly ashes uh, in concrete mixtures. So um, as far as materials and methods, we use a type one Portland cement for our study. Uh, this is particularly a type one that is local to the area uh, here in central Texas with the alkali content about 0.078, which is fairly high um, uh, for the area. Um, we had seven flashes that we um, referred to and used as a part of this study. We had two F ashes, as you see there, F1 and F2, or sorry, three F ashes, F1, F2, F3, and then four class C ashes. And so uh, there's C1, C3, C2, C3, C4. Um, so as I mentioned before, we had a particularly a interesting type of fly ash that was a part of the study. And this is the one that we relied on the most in terms of doing uh, additional testing on or more uh, testing and, and comparisons to the others, uh, which was F2. This was a particular flash that was produced from 80% PRB or powder river basin uh, coal and 20% lignite. So this is dominantly a class C fly ash by coal, but in terms of uh, chemistry in these particular flashes, it is classified as a class F based on the 618 uh, limits. And so if you look at the table below, you can see sort of the variations in chemistry. The specific one that I like to refer to the most is usually the calcium uh, oxide analysis. And so you see here uh, between the different seven uh, fly ashes, there's variations quite a bit in terms of the calcium oxide content. Clearly the F ashes are uh, below the 18% threshold that 618 now specifies. This is something actually fairly new as far as 618 goes is that uh, they now have a sort of uh, requirement in terms of the calcium oxide content, meaning it's sort of 18% or less for class F and 18 or greater than 18% being a class C, which in my opinion has been a more traditional approach of identifying flashes than the sort of some of the oxides of silica, iron, and aluminum. But they kind of go hand in hand, right? And so when looking at the um, some of the oxides for that particular flash, F2, you notice that it early meets that sort of requirement at about 70.5. And again, uh, this requirement for 618 is sort of, uh, you know, loose, loosely based in that, you know, normally anything that has at least a 50%, uh, some of the oxides of iron, aluminum, silica is considered a fly ash in, in this particular content. And then a class C content and using 70% is considered to class set. And so, okay, Fred, Fred, uh, oh, we need to uh, wrap up in two or three minutes here. Oh, wow, really? Okay, we have quite a bit of time. All right, um, I'll try to wrap up as quickly as possible. Um, so I'll kind of just quickly go over the testing program. We did, you know, compress the splitting and elastic modulus. What I really want to just kind of focus on is just the nomenclature. We use uh, two different types. Uh, a nomenclature you can see here, if you look at, we have a cement type and then we have flash type in the center, C being the class C and the dosage type. And as far as the ternary blends, what I really want to focus on is that we had, again, remember, four, two different types of ashes, uh, F and a C, and where we blended it as a total replacement of 30%. So any, either a 2010, 15, 15, or 10, 20 sort of replacement. Uh, my student likes to show how many mixes he did in the study, so I'll, I won't go into that. So because of the timing constraints, I'm just going to focus on mechanical strengths data. I'm going to kind of skip over the hydration development and stuff. So... Um, Looking at specifically the compressive strength, you see that between the different uh, graphs here, what we have is two different water ratios, 0.4 on the left and 0.45. And what we're showing here is simply just binary mixtures, meaning straight cement or replaced with some amount of C or F ashes at a 20 or 30% replacement. So when it came to class C, we had 30% replacement. And when it came to class F, we only had 20% replacement. So uh, what again, I wanna focus on is that F2 ash and where Again, you see that between the strength comparisons, over time you have a strength increase over time. But what's interesting to note is that when comparing the class C's with the class F, class F, F1, denotes a fairly smaller strength gain in comparison to all mixtures, whereas class F2 had a higher strength in comparison to F1 and, and really had a, a similar performance in terms of compressive strength uh, in comparison to the other class C's. So, what is interesting, again, while this is a particularly a class F in the uh, 618 specification, uh, actually shows sort of a similar trend in terms of class C strength comparisons uh, between these specific flashes, at least. 
Um, when looking at compression strength uh, in ternary blends, what you see on the left is again, uh, 0.4 on the right, 0.45. But what you're looking at again is the blend system. So what we blended with specifically is class C2 uh, fly ash with F1 and F2 uh, class F fly ashes. And these are again at 2010, 15, 15, and then 10, replacement. And so what's interesting, again, what's interesting to note between the, the F1 and F2, again, the F1 is sort of behaving as we expect with lower compressive strengths early on and generally having lower compressive strengths in comparison to the class C even at 91 days. Um, however, F2 in this case generally showed gener higher compressive strengths in comparison to just the F1 ternary blend mixture and, and had actually the highest compressive strengths um, in, compression, in comparison to the control and the actual F1 uh, ternary mixtures. All right. um, I'll kind of fast forward a little bit just because of timing constraints. Uh, in terms of tensile strength, as well as modulus, we saw not necessarily a increase in strength as much as we saw for the mechanical strength in terms of compressive strength. Uh, but generally, we saw a sort of similar uh, performance throughout the, the entire mixture, showing uh, you know, generally about three to four MPA of, of tensile strength in this particular case. Generally, again, this ternary mixtures, we didn't see necessarily a huge trend increase or variations and differences between both F1 and F2, which was sort of interesting to note because uh, in the compressive strength, at least, we saw a much dramatic higher increase with F2 in comparison to F1. Um, modulus, sort of similar trends to tensile, not a much difference between modulus, between the binary mixtures, as well as the ternary mixtures. You don't see much of a difference between the control as well as with the ternary mixtures in terms of differences. I do kind of want to just quickly emphasize some of the data for the calorimetry stuff. So the calorimetry, if you note, right, the control in the gray here has a higher sort of uh, heat of evolution in comparison to the fly ashes as we expect. But what I really want to show here is really the differences between F1 and the C ash, as well as F2 and F1. So in F1, you can see here in the blue line, has a dilution effect showing a lower heat of evolution in comparison to the control. But with F2 and C2, they showed fairly similar sort of lines at least sort of trends in comparison in terms of heat evolution uh, at 23 Celsius. And so what this is sort of indicating is that again, that F2 because of that sort of blended coal source, right? That 80% to 20% uh, PRV and lignite, we sort of saw, saw a more sort of reactivity that showed a sort of trend as that is more similar to a class C than particularly what the class F showed in this case. Right. Okay, Fred, we, 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 need, to, we need to stop. All right. Um, no problem. So, so ho hopefully everyone was able to, to get the gist of that as you went through your results. So skipping the conclusions, I think everything got yeah. covered there. Um, okay. I, I have just one question uh, when we mm -hmm. only have time for mine, I think. Um, is there a paper that we could that we could dig up? Because it's a, a very interesting work and I, I would love to see more. Yeah. So this is actually under review right now. So we'll hopefully have a paper um, out in the next month or so. Okay, thank you. So I'll definitely share that with everyone afterwards. Okay, thank you.